，而还是我们的母亲湖，保护好以后才可以持续去发展。我们把“黄沙”之称啊，立住了，立水青山，就是金山银山这个立呢，也就实现了。我们要身怀对自然的敬畏之心，尊重自然，顺应自然，保护自然，构建人与自然和谐共生的地球家园。I've spent the better part of the last two days with Hulichong, a local Dali fisherman that's witnessed the turmoil and changes. Of his hometown's environmental and ecological development. The 55-year-old has spent his entire life here, and as he tells me, problems began to emerge in the late 90s, when pollution and algae plagued the waters of Arhai Lake. To his dismay, environmental policies would result in him shutting down his fishing boats and ponds. 当时我见了这个鱼塘，花了我十一年的呃这个心血。Reflecting on his past, Mr. He recalls investing his family's entire income into a fishing boat and pond, an investment that eventually went to waste. 当时心里面很难过，因为我们毕竟是靠水吃水，我们的呃这个生计就成了问题。Our High Lake is China's seventh largest body of water. Covering 250 square kilometers, decades ago, more than a million people resided along the shorelines of the lake. Aside from traditional fishing, the serene environment pushed some of the residents to transform their homes into homestays, including Mr. He. His own guest house was opened in 2012, which made him an annual income of around $6,000. But as I learn more about his story, he tells me how, despite the newfound business success, the tourism boom in fact led to even more environmental impacts. Speaking with Mr. He, I learned that the Chinese president has attached great importance to the protection of the waters here, which is drank and consumed by more than 800,000 locals. So I'm here outside of the home of Li De Chang. He's a local resident here in Dali, and as we enter this courtyard here, his home is on the shorelines of our high lake, just beyond this wall. Is that iconic lake that defines the town and city of Dali? But what makes this home special, especially this courtyard, is back in 2015, Chinese President Xi Jinping paid a visit to his home. Of course, touring other parts of Dali, and his main message to people here was all about protecting the environment. He sat down here, speaking with some of the local residents, checking in on them, seeing how their lives here are developing in Dali. 我跟张伟叔的生长，在你们洱海边上。留了一张合影，我说我现在看到这个水啊，希望多少年过了以后再照一张照片，那时候的水比现在更干净，啊，更清澈。如果不干净了，我要找你们。<笑> Asking about the president's visit, Mr. Lee tells me that it brought not only greater funding for environmental protection, but more importantly, an increase in awareness. From 2011 to 2016, the number of tourists visiting Dali increased from 15 million to 39 million. But statistics show that, driven by huge economic benefits, about 90% of the restaurants and hotels around Arhai Lake were operating illegally. They were also the main source of pollution, exacerbated by the absence of sewage treatment facilities. In 2017, Yunnan announced a series of measures, including bans on catering businesses that discharge pollutants into Arhai Lake. More than 2,400 restaurants and homestays were shut, including that of Mr. He's, which was closed for eight months. I opened the restaurant after the water was 20 feet high. But this time, we have paid for it. We have not been disappointed. 一点都不后悔啊！一一直非常支持，因为当时我们是也想到，我们靠这个洱海吃饭，这个洱海环境好了，水质好了，我们才会有可持续性发展。Then came the construction of a new ecological corridor alongside the shores of the lake. This would end up with Mr. He tearing down parts of his family inn, but this time he changed his attitude completely. 啊，当时也是没有怨言，直接就是呃双手赞同拆除
This is what Mr. He kept on telling me during the day. With the improvement of water quality, many villagers, including him, started other business ventures in 2020. Mr. He secured 580 acres of land to grow rice and oil seeds. This was also what the government called the green and organic agriculture industry. After more than two decades of persistent efforts to clean up the shores and waters of Arhai Lake, both locals and visitors can now enjoy this lush and serene environment. But the hopes are that this isn't something temporary, but instead something that lasts for future generations to come. From the depths of Arhai Lake to China's arid northwest in Gansu province, I've come here to meet with a multi-generational group of people, families of farmers that have committed their entire lives to combating desertification across the Babusha Desert. Forty years ago, this entire area was barren, with expanding sand dunes as a result of drought and overcropping. As the last of the first generation of farmers to be known as the six old men, Zhang Runyuan, together with five other villagers, began planting trees together dating back to the 80s. By the turn of the century, their shovels and hands would plant more than 10 million trees across 50 square kilometers of desert. In 2019, the locals of Babusha were recognized for their anti-desertification efforts during a visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping. It was right here where Chinese President Xi Jinping plowed through some of the soil, taking part in the desertification control measures here in Gansu province. And what the six old men have accomplished and continue to do over the past several generations resonates with what the Chinese president referred to as the Yugong spirit. The locals later told me that the spirit of Yugong, taken from Chinese folklore, refers to the tireless efforts of generations who aim to change the seemingly impossible and treacherous natural environment. As the six old men aged, they made a pact, a commitment that all of their families would carry on the arduous task of pushing back the desert. But Guo Wanggang, a second-generation farmer, was reluctant in the beginning when his father passed the responsibility to him to maintain the greenery they had started. Then calamity struck in 1993, a sandstorm that left 23 people dead, including 18 children. This changed Guo forever, realizing the significance of what his predecessors had set out to do. As he looks on at the saplings that have been planted, growing taller day by day, his determination to curb the desert's expansion has only been amplified over the past few decades.
Over a span of 38 years, three generations of the six old men have pushed back more than 2,000 hectares of sand and planted 30 million trees across the desert. Nearly 7,000 hectares of farmland has now been protected with a green corridor now established to prevent further spread of the sand. <sighs> so I've been speaking with Mr. Guo for this past hour or so. We've been sort of setting up these grass grids here to protect the, the sand from flying around. And from his experience, he's been doing this for four generations, four decades. Every day, 6.30 a.m. in the morning to 6.30 at night, maybe even longer. Uh, not much in sight here uh, in this desert. So they've been doing this for so long, three generations of different families, different farmers out here, uh, all doing this to hopefully have some vegetation in the future, protect the spread of sand, and hopefully bring some more greenery and color to Babusha. I gotta keep going. What I saw in these two distinctive parts of China was how ordinary people have made sacrifices to protect the environment not only for today, but for future generations. The country's top leadership recognized them as role models of environmental protection and has called for unremitting efforts to consolidate China's green ecological barriers. The dividends will perhaps bear fruit in years to come.